plaintiff, Christopher Randall, admits that he's not perfect, but insists he has never hurt the defendant, his mother. Christopher claims the defendant accused him of assaulting her and then filed a protection order against him, but she never showed up to court. He's suing his mother for the value of a truck. Defendant Cynthia Randall says Christopher acts more like her father than her son, and he's been in and out of prison for 13 years. Cynthia claims Christopher is so proud of the time he spent in prison that he got his inmate number tattooed on his arm, and she's countersuing for emotional distress. Start with you. Uh, first of all, I'm not perfect, and I have a long past, but I've never hurt my mother before. And right now I'm being accused of hitting my mother and going to jail for it. Why do you think you would be accused of that? Well, what happened was a few months ago, me and my mother had a long argument. It was, it was, it was a real bad day. And I don't know how, but somehow in this argument, she got mad enough, she picked up her arm, she charged me with an arm. So as, a, as she come at me with an arm, I grabbed her arm, that had the iron in it. The other hand I had free. I didn't touch her. She was slapping me in my face. Then when I pushed her and pulled the iron away from her, she falls. And when she hits the ground, she said that I was assaulting her. She called the police. When she called the police, I didn't take off running and leave and go anywhere. I went outside and I waited on the police because I had a side of the story to tell as well. So when the police finally get there, a few other things take place before the police get there. When the police get there, I tell them my side of the story. They wasn't gonna take me at first because they said it sounded like self-defense. But then after getting another opinion from another officer, that's when they took me to jail because someone had to go. It was a domestic dispute. I was incarcerated. I paid my bond. I waited on my court dates. My mother never showed up to the court dates. She had two chances to come to court. She never showed up. Well, I love my mother. We go through a lot, though. And we had a long history. She did this to me before in 1998. In 1998, um, I moved to my mother's house when I was on tether, and her and her boyfriend stole $3,300 $3, from me and had me locked up then. They said they assaulted, they, she said that I assaulted her and her boyfriend, and they wrote a statement, and they sent me back to the Department of Corrections. I beat that because the statement didn't coincide with nothing that happened with my whereabouts. So now we're going through the same thing again. And right now, I just want what belongs to me. Um, Ma'am, let me hear from you regarding your relationship with your son. He wants to be my father. And he wants to treat me like I'm... When did that start? Uh, when... After he did almost 13 years in and out the penal system for the same crime. What's that? Commercial auto theft. What age was he? He was about 17, 18. How many times did it happen? About eight. Eight? Yes. He needs to be stopped. Mm -hmm. He said he's God. Nobody can do anything with him, the law, or anybody. He is That's so prison proud. talk, but go ahead. He is so proud... That's prison talk. ...that he has his inmate number tattooed on one of his forearms. That is something that I would not you want on my body. You have your prison uh, number tattooed on you? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Single parent. He had this incident where he say I took $3,300 from him. He had been out of jail a week. Out of it and tethered to my home. He didn't have it. I didn't steal it. I'm not a thief. I work for everything I own. First of all, I'm not perfect. And I have a long past. But I've never hurt my mother before. And right now I'm being accused of hitting my mother and going to jail for it. Why do you think you would be accused of that? Plaintiff Christopher Randall is suing his mother, who claims she was forced to file a restraining order against Christopher after he assaulted her. Have you ever been convicted of a violent crime? No. Okay. And you say you and your mother have done this a lot, or I don't know if it's physical, but you all have argued a lot. Why? We have a real crazy relationship. Me and my mother have like a brother and sister relationship. All right. And so tell me how often you all argue, or how often you all argued, say, from the time you were 15? Let's say once every six months. Okay. And it, did it uh, speed up when you became an adult? It got worse when I became an adult. Then she started sending me to institutions. She started getting me incarcerated, falsely accusing me of stuff and putting me away. And when did she first do that? When I was... I think I was 12. 12 Based 13. on what? Um, behavior problems. You just admitted you misbehaved. What was the next time you were institutionalized? That was in 1998. How old were you then? I was 19. What happened then? Um, 
Honestly, I think they just wanted to rob me because we didn't have any kind of argument. We didn't talk about nothing. I Who was going to, to work. Rob you? My mother and our boyfriend. And what occurred? My supervisor called me at work to tell me that I need to uh, talk to my parole agent. And my parole agent tells parole me. Parole from age 12? I went to prison for stealing. Okay. I was, you know. Stealing. How old? I was about 17. All right, so what happened at 19? At 19, like I said, I was on tether. Just came home from doing some time. I get a call from my parole agent, actually first from my supervisor. Then I talked to my parole agent. He told me, come on back. He told me not to go back to my placement. I went to my placement because I had money there. So I'll go back to get my money. I'll go pick up the safe that my mother bought me, and the safe is completely empty. <laughs> what so happened? stole my money. OK, and they then what? my money. And I was incarcerated again. She wrote a statement saying that I tried you to... You were incarcerated for her stealing from you? No, That's she... odd. She called my parole agent and told him it was a problem with me staying in her house. Mm -hmm. They put me out. She took my money, put me out, and I was incarcerated later because she wrote a statement saying I tried to jump on her and her boyfriend. When's the next time you were institutionalized? Just recently in, in April. And what was that for? That was for domestic violence, assault and battery. Uh, against her, allegedly? Yes. yes. All right. What about the uh, assaults? OK. Um... April 29th, we had words because I didn't like what he kept calling me. So I said, we need to talk about it. What was he calling you? A Is that true? No, sir. He, about 10 times. I said, we really got to talk, bro, because this ain't working. Mm -hmm. You can say it to anybody else, but you can't say it to me. Your wives, your five baby mamas, all that. Five he children five, by five different mothers? And none of them is his wife. I have been the backbone while he was doing his prison time, making sure the babies had what they needed. And if I had a couple of dollars left, I would even send money to him. OK? OK, I, so on that incident, you probably did come after him. As I text him, I said, we got to talk about that. He said, ain't nothing to talk about. And put that word down there again. I said, OK, so when he came back to the house, I was upstairs, I'm trying to, and I was just saying, we got to talk about this, because this is not rude. He grabs me, throws me up against the threshold of the door, choking me like this. And I'm like, I, what are you doing? I can't. So I'm looking around, I see an iron. Did the police come? Was anyone oh, yes. prosecuted? Um, I don't know. They didn't, they didn't send me any papers You never to followed up? I followed up. I have a letter right here where I followed up, and that's the police report. And what did the detective tell you? She's never returned my call. All right. So there was another incident, he says. What happened there? Uh, so much has happened in the last six years. OK. So it's only been once? That I can recall. All right. But this is horrible. What is that you want to show me? These are the pictures. Mark on your neck. That's a bruise on my thigh. The pigmentation never came back. That's the door he kicked in. That's my arm, my thumb where he left. That's a bruise inside my arm because he was restraining me with both his arms. And that's the same mark. And that's another bruise. And that's my finger he tore open. And that's another bruise. And that's another bruise. And I did go get a PPO. You and did? It was, yeah, it's granite. And it was granite? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'll be getting one for the rest of my life every year. Okay. Plaintiff Christopher Randall is suing his mother, who claims she was forced to file a restraining order against Christopher after he assaulted her. All right, sir, your claim that she owes you $3,150 for the value of a truck. Yes, How does sir. she owe you that? I paid for the truck, but can I visit what she just said, please? Mm -hmm. Okay, first of all, the, everything she just showed you, it doesn't even coincide with her, 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 her uh, uh, the incident. She said, I choked her. Mm -hmm. It's not a choke move. That, that line right there, that came from me pushing her and pulling the arm back. She tried mm -hmm. to hit me with the arm. She was smacking me with her got right you. hand. All right, I got your story. Let's okay. get to the value of the truck. Okay. Well, the value of the truck, I paid $850 for this truck. I, I fixed everything. I paid my own monies for this truck. It belonged to me. I was going through a situation with my wife and me, and my wife separated, so therefore I moved back with my mom. My mom knew I had this truck. She seen me fixing this truck. She, see, she know I don't have a license. So me and my mother made an agreement. She said, Chris, if you'll take me where I need to go, 
I put the truck in my name. She said everybody in the world is for dual usages. So I did it. So what happened to the truck? She kept my truck. After, uh, she, after, after this situation right why? here happened, because she said, I got it, I got it here for my witness of why she kept my truck. Your witness? I don't see anybody. No, I, I got a statement. My sister, oh, she's Oh, your she's witness Ill. statement. It's witness statement. I, see, I got a witness right here. She's her witness. Is she I your witness? That's my witness. That's All her right. witness. That's her. Well, well, you don't have one then. She's not yours. Why did you say that? That's family. Why did you say that? That's she's family. not it's yours. Did she know what's going on? Sir, many times you've been in court, you know the difference between your witness and her. I understand that. <laughs> All right, ma'am, did you take and keep his truck? No, I kept my truck. <clears throat> and he had the keys. Okay. If he wanted the truck, he could have drove off with it. How did it become yours? Because everything's in my name. But who paid for it? Um, it was a joint effort. How much was paid? Um, uh, like 1200 1200 so that would be 600 is your share. All right, 3500 for emotional distress. How does he owe you for that? For whooping me and beating me, I'm medically yep. disabled. And I believe everything you've said. So I'm going to grant your judgment for 3500 and I'm going to uh, give you $600. She admits that you bought half of it. So you, she Honest. admits that. Honest lady. That's and she lie. says she, it was $1,200. <laughs> judgment for the plaintiff for $600. Counterclaim, $3,500. Thank you. Thank you. They really need to settle as mother and son. But justice was served today, and I, I'm, I'm happy about it. He needs to get it together. But as far as me, he's dead in my life. That was wrong. How's she gonna admit to paying $600 for something and she has nothing, no proof of nothing? That's wrong, but she can have it, though, because I still eat.